Hey, it's Mike here, and today a recent study that went more or less under the radar, but it has massive implications, and that was one on meat consumption and the connection between 25 different diseases, and a lot of the relationships were ones we knew about, but the novel one, the newer one, is a connection to pneumonia, increased meat, and increased pneumonia risk. Don't worry, this isn't a secret COVID video. We're not gonna go crazy about COVID, but the point here is there's a massive implication for COVID, which is one of our leading killers here in the US, or at least it recently has been, but we're gonna go and quickly knock out this study, take a look at it and learn about it. Yes, my beard is sort of a little bit back. I saw a comment that was like, it's taking him forever to grow back the beard. It must be because he's a weak proteinless vegan. The amount of times that I've trimmed this, I trim this down to almost nothing once a week. I just had to share that. It grows fast, no problem in that department. Here's a study, it was published recently in Biomed Central's Medicine Journal, and it used data from the UK Biobank study, which started in 2006 and has been following about 500,000 people, half a million people. It looked at processed meat and unprocessed meat consumption. And again, those 25 diseases, which I just wanna say right now, didn't include cancer. So that cancer meat connection is not part of this conversation anyway. All right, here are the results. Lumping unprocessed red and processed meat together that is associated with higher risks of ischemic heart disease, pneumonia, obviously, diverticular disease, which is where you get little pouches out your intestines, colon polyps, fun stuff, and diabetes. And that the results were similar for unprocessed red meat and processed meat intake separately. So you have those familiar connections between increased risk of heart disease and colon stuff, but then that 30% increased risk of pneumonia is quite interesting and obviously has some major implications, especially because, again, not to get too into the COVID stuff, but it starts out with pneumonia and then that graduates to the acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is what leads to actual death in most cases in COVID where there is death. So you really don't wanna have an increased risk of pneumonia, obviously, but then it's also true for those unprocessed red meat. So those virgin cuts of cow meat and pig meat, is virgin cut even a thing? I think it is. <laughs> those are also associated as well. So not off the hook there. And like most studies like this, they did some adjusting for different life lifestyle factors, and I always have to look and see maybe one of those was overdone or underdone. And in this case, like many other situations where they're looking at meat, BMI can be a little bit suspicious. They adjusted for that. Saying, quote, in the present study, most of the positive associations between meat consumption and health risks were substantially attenuated or lessened after adjusting for BMI. The issue here, of course, is that you're supposed to adjust for things that are completely unconnected to what you're looking at, but BMI is to a large extent driven by the high calorie foods that you eat, a high calorie food, for example, is meat. Even if this doesn't account for all of the BMI difference, it could make a statistical difference. For example, if you're looking at hemorrhoids on the chart, you see that it's just a couple ticks away from being statistically significantly increased in terms of risk for meat consumption. So, so perhaps with a more accurate BMI model, that would have been another disease added to the list here. Anyway, that's just a thought, but that brings us to the question that is always a question with epidemiology. Is there a real cause here or was it just correlation? Of course, this due to the fact that it is epidemiology, can't determine causation, we'd have to have some type of intervention experiment where we're changing different groups and looking at outcomes. But there's some interesting stuff that the researchers say here. Quote, it is possible that the observed association might reflect a causal link, for example, related to the high availability of iron in unprocessed red meat and processed meat, since excess iron has been found to be associated with a higher risk of infection and increased availability of iron for pathogens. So the same way that iron added to the ocean can cause a phytoplankton bloom, you could have some excess iron from red meat leading to a bloom in certain pathogenic bacteria obviously isn't going to be good for pneumonia. This is further supported by the only measly 3% increased risk of pneumonia with high chicken consumption. And it's not statistically significant, of course, because it's so small. But chicken obviously doesn't have a lot of that heme iron. It's not a red meat, so it wouldn't be feeding any pathogens, any iron, but it is worth mentioning. I don't think it would be enough to really change anything, but chicken is a very high BMI raising food, at least from a study like this one of any meat, it was the most associated with obesity. So perhaps that one was the biggest victim of over adjusting for BMI, thinking out loud once again. Another potential cause could be inflammation, just to throw it out there. Pneumonia, obviously very connected to inflammation. People stop eating meat and animal 
animal products in general, we see in vegans about a 30% drop in C-reactive protein at least. Of course, there are a lot of different inflammatory processes, but the idea is if you have a higher level of base inflammation in your body, you know, then you could be closer to developing inflammatory diseases or inflammatory issues like pneumonia. And that could particularly be caused by things like NEU, 5GC, fancy word, and endotoxins that are in meat, as well as just that heme iron directly causing inflammation. Anyway, another one, probably a bit of a long shot connection here is COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. That is associated with higher risks of pneumonia. And as this study shows, it is also associated with processed meat consumption. It doesn't explain the unprocessed meat connection, but maybe it plays a bit of a causal role. But back to the researchers guessing why it might just be a confounder or a non-causal link. They say, quote, it is also possible that hospital admission for pneumonia is a marker for comorbidity and overall frailty. In other words, meat might just make you frail. So uh, I'll, I'll take that one. As, as a vegan, it's, it's satisfying to just hear them say that. The bias is dripping off my body. Anyway, there's another interesting link that's just worth exploring. There's nothing causal, just interesting thought. And that brings us to places like India who have really low meat consumption. And yes, the COVID situation is not over there yet. And there are so many factors there, but it's worth noting that after COVID has been around for quite a while, the population based US death rate is 14 times higher than India's death rate. And the US consumes about 30 times as much meat per capita as India does. So yeah, it might have something to do with how India is a younger in general, and there's a survivorship bias where they've probably survived other bad diseases. They might be undercounting deaths, but 14 times higher is something worth mentioning. Now maybe, just maybe having a lower meat consumption to some degree lowered their pneumonia risk, which would seriously lower their COVID death risk. Anyway, I'd love to see more research on this to see if the connection holds up, but that 30% is no joke. And again, that's from 500,000 people's worth of data. And it's pretty recent data starting in 2006. So you can't just throw these findings out. Anyway, let me know down below if you think there is another type of causal connection I didn't cover here. I wanna keep the video short because it's just one thing, boom, 30% higher risk, worth mentioning. Anyway, feel free to like the video, subscribe, notification bell, all that good stuff. If you want, you can support me on Patreon because that is a huge help. And everybody is doing that, it's awesome. So. Thank you to those people and I'll see you next time.